Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life Button Series. This is video number two of the Waterberry Button Identification videos that I've put together so that if you have any of these videos, I'm sorry, buttons in your collection, you can simply look at these videos and have an excellent reference as to what you have and try to pick out all of the ones that might be Waterberry Button Company buttons. Now, some of the rare buttons from this company are the fashion and couture buttons. Why? Because a lot of people are not able to easily identify them. And also, most people um, associate the button making part of that business with uniform military type buttons. So it could be the post postal worker uniform with if it has brass buttons or metal silver buttons on it, or obviously someone who's in any branch of the military. So that's the reason why the fashion buttons sometimes get overlooked. So when I come back in a minute, we're going to simply go through showing you the back, the front, and the shank. And of course, if there's any words or hallmarks on the button, you will see those as well. And just to let you know as a reference, I have collected these buttons over the decades, as well as not long ago, I was lucky enough to acquire a large collection of buttons that were made directly by that company. Um, it was a multi-generational family. The mother as well as the grandmother worked at the factory and the son who I purchased these from, he's in his 50s just to give you an age reference and some of the buttons are antique and others are vintage. So make sure you get your tea and also hopefully take out your buttons and let's see what you have. So the first button that I am showing you in this particular video is a version I think of a fleur-de-lis. I have this larger button that is, I'm trying to get this so that it is not as blurry. I'm using my husband's camera and as usual it sucks. Why? Because he never really adjusts anything. So there you go, that's better. Um, and this is what the front looks like. It's a two-piece process that they use, you know, to put the front, attach it to the back that already had the shank built in to the mold or the die. And you can see the letter W, which is one of the um, identifiers for Waterberry Button Company buttons. So I actually have, like I said, the large version, which you just saw. But I also have the smaller version of that button. And this is a smaller one. And you can see that the front is basically the same design, but... The back is different. And this one actually um, does have the words, you know, spelled out on it. And look at the shank. It's a rounded back type charm string almost type shank, which is one of their shanks that they used quite often. Yes, you'll hear me toss the buttons into another box after I'm finished like showing them to you so just excuse any little noises. This button is one that's made of cloth so the red is a cloth. It, you can see it has a little moth hole in it and the back is made of brass but also there's a painted metal um, that makes up the shank. And this button was made using three parts, uh, actually four parts as part of the um, process. And the black shank, um, it's probably painted with an enamel paint, but it's definitely made of metal. 
and let's show you something super pretty. Not that you haven't seen a pretty button already, but this button is really interesting and I need to do some research on this. But you can see it's a crown and it has a cross at the very top, which is not attached to the crown. Um, beautiful um, framing around this. I believe this button was probably made using, you know, obviously more than their normal six step process. The W is on the back and you can see the shank. Yes, as you can see, I am just going to go right through these for you guys. And if the video cuts off, no worries. I have another one coming up afterwards to continue the identification process. Okay, don't know why this just got blurry. Let's see if we can... Usually, one of the tricks people use is they put a piece of paper behind, and sometimes that works, but obviously not all the time. So, this is this button is definitely much shinier than it appears in this picture. It's a very shiny button, um, and it has this beautiful decor decorative edge. You can see it's slightly domed. I don't know if you could fully see that, but it is slightly domed. This is what the back looks like with a shank. It's, like I said, one of their standard shanks that they used. Here is another really pretty button. Okay, see? I don't know why that silver one had a problem. This is one of my favorites. Just absolutely pretty. All that detail. You know me. I love detail. It's made, you know, looks like they use that six-step process on this one. You can see what the shank looks like. Gorgeous, actually. You know what? Give you another close-up of that one. This, I think, is a very unusual button for the Waterberry Button Company, but it's definitely one that was produced by them. They may have been, and some of these, the buttons that you are seeing are proof of concept buttons, so that means that some of them never made it out to production, like they were test or prototypes, and for whatever reasons, the designs were not desired, liked by whoever is making the final decisions, so that means that they were never sold to the public. I just thought that was a little interesting fact. Here is another button that is super pretty. Look at that. That's just really nice beading detail. And then this is what the back looks like. And can you see that, those slight impressions on the back? That is something that is, you know, one of the typical signs of some of the not well or unmarked Waterberry Button Company buttons. And all, you almost could see the W there, unlike other buttons where they made them in the butt. The W is very, very clear. One of the things that um, I talked about also before is, you know, taking some of the buttons, I know there were some people who asked, actually there was one person who asked me, actually two people asked me, um, what do I play, one of them is someone who follows our channel, hello Ms. S, you know I adore you, and the other one was someone that I know, um, and they were like, what are you going to do with all of these buttons? One of the ideas that I had, and I've done this with other buttons before, is to create um, cufflinks out of them. You just really need the right um, chain linking to do it. And you can see these are also marked very clearly with that W. And you also need to have the right size buttons because obviously the small button has to be able to push through a buttonhole on a shirt, you know, without causing a lot of problems. Now there's a couple ways that you could 
you know, use these. If you're creative enough, you might add your own buttonholes to the collar of a shirt, the very end of that collar where the point is, and you can actually push these through. And then another thing is instead of buttoning your top button on your shirt, you could actually add one of these cuff links and then you could sort of pin the shirt closed and this would be your decorative button at the top because, I mean, this is not a button cover. So it's a way of cheating and not using a button cover. Now you would have to be creative with how you sort of close that shirt up at the top, but obviously it's doable. And also you can use um, other materials to create cufflinks. The only thing I would say is if it, they look homemade, people will not desire them. So if you do make your own cufflinks, make sure you use the right materials so that you come, you know, your, your quality is there. And also it just doesn't look like, you know, something that was thrown together to simply, you know, try to get rid of a bunch of buttons. You don't want to do that. Let's see, what else can I show you? I have a lot of buttons here, so you guys are going to be so happy with the number of videos coming out. And this video will probably end soon, so I do want to tell you that your health is your wealth. Without your health, you have nothing, so please take care of yourselves. And also, um, I will simply continue to show you buttons until this video ends, which could be now, but it's not. Look at that. It has like horns on his head, some weird ponytail thing. Very unusual button, but all of these are Waterberry Button Company buttons. I actually have this button in a couple of different sizes. And they also made these in different colors. And there are some really pretty small buttons here as well. Like I said, I hope that you guys will take a look through your button hauls because I bet you have a few of these in your collections. This has pearl. an older button of course and all the buttons that you are seeing right now um, are vintage or antique so there's nothing here that is brand new um, the company was actually sold in the year 2000 and you know that company is doing what it does but at least they kept the Waterberry button company name which is great but I am not lucky enough yet to have any of their buttons. But hopefully soon. That would be really awesome if I got lucky enough. And the Mattatuck Museum, you see that right there, is one of the places in Connecticut where you can go and view thousands of Waterbury Button Company buttons and other things that the company made out of metals, brass, Bakelite, etc. You can see that shank. Let's do this one. I like this one because it's like a shield. And of course, I don't know, I have a thing for the domed buttons. I do like those. And Waterbury is known as the Brass City. So that's why you'll see that the majority of what they made was out of brass. Or at least it was brass in maybe another marriage of materials. And 
I think I will end it on this particular button. Are you ready for this one? You're not ready. You're not ready. Gorgeous. So thank you for tuning in to the Velvet Lounge Life. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell notification so you'll know, or at least be the first to know when we have new videos. Share our videos on other social media sites. Um, YouTube likes that as well as giving us a thumbs up because it shows them that people are interested in this particular subject matter. And it will, you know, allow them to hopefully, you know, somehow give us a little more time on their platform versus, let's say, videos where people are just playing video games. So let's share this history. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and be well.